Most people would take it as obvious that big things are likely to weigh more than small things because the force of gravity on something big is greater. So this big stone will register a much higher value on the bathroom scales than the small stone. What is not so obvious, but was proposed by Newton centuries ago, is that it is not just the Earth's gravity pulling down an object, but that the force is mutual. The object attracts the Earth as the Earth attracts the object. However, we don't generally notice this because the Earth is bigger than most objects. This idea applies equally to planets and large bodies. For example, it is not just the Moon that is attracted to the Earth, but the force of attraction is mutual. It follows then that if you weigh yourself on Earth, as this astronaut is, and then, without eating, drinking, sweating, or going to the toilet, you move to the Moon, on the Moon you'd have exactly the same mass, there'd be exactly the same amount of you, but you would weigh less, and that's because the Moon has got considerably less mass than the Earth. Newton realised that the only reasonable explanation of a force keeping the Moon in orbit around the Earth was that the force should be gravity. That the force which is required to accelerate the Moon towards the centre of the orbit must be provided by the gravitational pull, that is the mutual gravitational pull between the Earth and the Moon. And also the same mechanism must keep the planets orbiting around the Sun. However, the mathematics for this didn't work out until Newton realised that gravity may not be constant but might reduce as the distance between masses increased. In other words, that the gravitational fields spread out. But this spreading out isn't in just one direction. Gravitational fields are spherical, so the spreading out is in two dimensions. If we marked out an imaginary three spheres around Earth, then on the surface of the smaller sphere, which has got a radius of r, we marked out one square metre. That gravitational field would spread out to twice the width and twice the height when you got to a distance 2r, so the area is four times as great. And then, again, when you get to a distance 3r from the Earth, the area increases by nine times, that is, three times the width and three times the height. If the area over which the gravity is acting is nine times as large, then the strength of that gravity must be only one-ninth as big. As the value of the distance increases, the area over which the gravity is spread increases by a factor of distance squared, r squared. And the strength of that gravitational force decreases. The gravitational force is proportional to 1 over r squared. If you want to think about this more carefully, there is a video headed Inverse Square Law in the series. Newton put these ideas together into what we now call Newton's law of gravitation. That is, the force of gravity between two masses depends upon the size of both of the masses. So force is proportional to the product of the two masses. And also that the force is proportional to the inverse of the square of the distance, the distance between the centres. So force is proportional to the product of the masses divided by distance squared. But gravity is a very slight force, only really noticeable if at least one of the masses is very large. So there is a constant of very small value, g, which completes this equation. g is now called the universal gravitational constant. Uppercase m and lowercase m are the masses of the two bodies, and r is the distance between centres. This is the mathematical expression of Newton's law of gravitation, with one final adjustment. The equation ought to have a minus sign. That's because the equation contains two vector measurements, force and distance. The distance r is measured outward from the centre, but the force f is measured towards the centre. The negative sign corrects this, and so that the final equation is the one shown. Thank you for watching.